It's a special edition of the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Hello, Ian, we're here. You're, you're, sounding, uh, you're, you're sounding like you're recovering. Slowly but surely, but my voice isn't quite back yet, so apologies for sounding a little hoarse. That's okay. That's okay. Just as long as you haven't become an actual horse, we're good. So, well, we have a special guest with us today. We do. We do. Welcome Radri back to the show. Yes, pleasure to be here. It's great to be here. Hello, my bumble kings and queens. Returning, returning and guest. And, yeah, it's been a long time. Right actually, <laughs> I think it's been a few years. Was it twenty 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 one? Was it? Might have been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, actually. I don't remember. It's been yeah. a long time. Yeah, I remember time now. Flies I when remember. you're having fun. Yes. We've had nothing but fun over the past few years. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. Hmm. Nothing, 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 any, no other, nothing but fun. That's all. That's all it is. We're all having fun here, right? We're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back, sir. How have you been? I've been great. How about yourself? I mean, besides being... Horse. Mm. Oh, horse. You know me, just trying to keep busy, keeping on top of all the Q&A amidst all the other plans and projects and things. So much going on. Great. Um, so, I mean, I guess I, I should just dive into my questions here. Yeah, I, might as well. So many questions. Do it. So I, I wanted to ask you guys, like, you guys are like the creators of the Bumble app, right? No, I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. Oh, oh yeah, because I was kind of hoping you'd be able to help me with something. Um, oh. Because I made one of like one of those Sonic OCs, you know, like with a profile and, you know, the app keeps telling me that like there's over like hundreds of Mobian singles in my area. Like, yeah. like just like five power rings away. And but like none of them seem to be responding to my messages. Well, um, I don't know. Well, here's you... the thing. Did you spin the sign left or right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the sign? What? What's that? The sign at the end of the stage. You know, it makes... Oh, OK. All right. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I need to do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because I was always wondering, like, maybe it was my OC. Maybe there's a problem with it. You know, it's like, how do you make, like, a great OC? You make, like, one like one that, like, you know, maybe you shouldn't make a hedgehog because a hedgehog is kind of, like, overused because, you know, everybody, like, makes a hedgehog when they're making their OC or something. Right? I was going to say something original. I was gonna say you just take Sonic and turn him a different color, but I guess you're trying not to do that, huh? Well, it seems like the best OCs today are like some sort of obscure animal you've never heard of. Like, I never even heard of what a Teneric was. Like, what was that? That's, that's like a, <laughs> that's an animal you find in like Madagascar, right? Something like that. Okay. Yeah, because like, I don't know, all the new OCs I seem to be seeing in, uh, at least in Sonic, seem to be all these animals I've never heard of. Well, you got and like... I think that's the way to go. You that's got, what you need to do. Yeah, you got like Whisper the Wolf. She's literally just a straight up wolf. I mean, that's, that's the true, most yeah. that's the most straight up <laughs> That's like a tradition started in Sonic 3. Was, Who really had heard of an echidna before an uncle's came on the yeah, scene? Yeah, right. I didn't even know how to pronounce echidna <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, I think it was my brain telling me it's like in in China? What? What's that? <laughs> I I think I was like I, I did echidna for a while as a kid. Echidna, yeah. Unless you were from Australia, then you'd heard of echidnas, but I never heard of one <laughs> before. Echidna, I guess I probably... it's what we're representing. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably our internet connection. Am I like delayed? I, I don't want to like talk over people. We might be a little delayed. I think it's just from the okay. fact that you're coming to us from Japan, so it's going to be probably yeah, I, I a guess little I probably... delayed. I probably should introduce myself a little bit. I guess. Um, You've been on the show before, but it's been a long time, so tell the people a little, yeah, little bit you about new, you. New listeners? Yeah. You, um, you know, my name is Radri. I mean, I, I used to do a show called Sonic Historian, but I've been on a bit of a hiatus um, trying to figure out a new direction for the show. And part of the reason why I wanted to be in the bubble cast today was, you know, to see if I can, you know, get an idea of what sort of that direction looks like. So, I mean, fun fact. I mean, we were just talking about an echidna now. Um, I had a, the former CEO of uh, Sega of America, Tom Kalinske, on the show, and he was telling me about how he claims that it was his idea that he said, why don't we do an echidna? I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of doubt it, but you never know. 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, at that time, at that time, it was I don't, anything could have happened. I don't know. I mean, this is the worst thing about like being being a historian or trying to figure out the facts. It's like trying to figure out who said what and who created what and who is responsible for what, and then you know you just jump on to anywhere on the internet, and then it's just sort of like no, 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 it was it was this and it was this and it was this, and then you watch a different YouTube video and you're like no, 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 no it was this, this, and this. Yeah, well, you can just make stuff up, you know? Or so they say. Yes. Um, okay, so I prepared a bunch of questions here. I know that uh, I got, I got, I'm going to, how do I say this? I know that, Ian, you, you answer so many questions that it's just sort of like, I don't even know what to ask you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do I even ask him? Like, do I just say, how are you? Nah, you should probably answer that one already. Yeah, I probably know the answer to that already. I mean, now you're horse. So I guess I get a, a real special edition. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I prepared a uh, – usually most interviews, they often do lightning rounds at the end. But I forgot to do mine in the beginning, kind of like as a warm-up. Kind the of Blitzkrieg. a Blitzkrieg. Uh, yeah, a Blitzkrieg. The Bumblecast Blitzkrieg, the BKBK. So, uh, yeah, these are a bunch of sh- short questions. And feel free to be elaborate or as concise as you like when answering these. So if you want to use, if you just want to say one word, okay. If you want to like talk about it, you know, ad nauseum, excellent. So without further ado, let's dive in. So I hand you a 52 card deck of bicycle playing cards. You choose one card, Ian. What is your card and why did you choose it? So I get to just rifle through the deck and pick one? Whatever one you want, but you can only pick one. And then you have to tell me why you chose it. Well, Joker, because why not? Why go with the boring standard 52? Take that one out of the deck. Hold it close to your heart. Interesting, the Joker. So you could, like, what, like, in a game of poker, or a game of, like, I guess, normal playing cards, what does the Joker represent to you? The fun outside the box. The technicality that exists that normal people would just cast aside and not even consider. But it's there, and thus it's worth considering and investigating. Chaos. (laughs) <laughs> so, fun fact, I have some Sonic the Hedgehog playing cards, and I happen to have one with the Joker in it. Let me see if I can send that to you. Oh, yeah? I'm going to send it in the chat here. I don't know if I've ever seen those. Yeah, up weird. Um, I think they're only Japan exclusive. Oh, no, no, maybe they're not. No, they're made in California. Never mind. I got them here, though. <laughs> wow. B- imported from America to Japan. That's a little backwards. Yeah, right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, Eggman's the Joker, huh? I guess that makes some sense. <laughs> is he a, is the appropriate Joker? Wouldn't it want to be Chaos? Yeah, well. Chaos, All right, then. Chaos, uh, chaos might be a little uh, obscure, I guess, for them. Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> All right, Mr. Ian Flynn, I'm going to ask, what makes you happy? Ah, uh, thunderstorms. Thunderstorms? Cool, cool days. Uh, yeah. Answer things. Just simplicity, everything being okay. neat and tidy and stable. <laughs> okay. What does failure mean? To not achieve what you have striven, striven, strove, a- attempted to achieve. Kind of like that sentence. That was a failure of a sentence. But it came around in the what? end, so it's fine. What does success mean? Being content with what you have achieved. What would you say is your greatest fear? It's a loaded. There's so many. That's a loaded question. It's like this. No, this. No, this. No, this. This is physically terrifying, but this is esoterically terrifying. Uh, a lightning round is terrifying. Getting asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> the future, the unknowable, ever mutable, unpredictable future. Okay, I think this next one. I I think I know the answer to, but here we go. Greatest accomplishment so far. How do I pick one that doesn't sound incredibly arrogant? Well, right. I don't think it matters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could see, you could I'd say it, it, somebody will interpret it as arrogant regardless of what you say. Yeah. So eh, it doesn't I'd matter. I'd say career. I've, I've enjoyed doing my passion for 15 years without ever having to drop it. I've gone from aspiring fan writer to having a seat at the big boys table at the core of the franchise. 
I mean, who, how many folks get to say that they've done that? It's been longer than 15 years, but round down, I guess. Uh, no, I write. I don't do math. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you say writing is math, though? Mm. <laughs> Maybe Bring not, not such blasphemy on my show. All right, all right, yeah. <laughs> Get your Got numbers me. out of here, <laughs> mathematician. I'm I'm terrible at math too. Yeah, well, that makes three uh, of us. <laughs> uh, so where can I get the best burger? Oh, it really depends on where you are. Um, around here in my neck of the woods, uh, I've act- that landscape has actually shifted a little bit. I feel like the one place I can most reliably get a just satisfying good old burger is a place called Burger Priest. I'm guessing that's like a mom and pop place. It's not a chain. It's a smaller chain, I think. Oh, okay. Hmm. If you're ever in Japan, I recommend the Great Burger. Mm. Excellent. Well, I mean, I'd, I'd hope it's great. Cause it's right in their name, so it better be great. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's excellent. It's like gourmet. Wow. You love it. Uh, so what would you say is the biggest problem with Sonic lately? The Sonic franchise IP. I feel like a lot of what I've said in recent episodes is coming under greater scrutiny. So I don't think I can approach that one impartially enough without it also generating some hazardous bad faith takes. So I'm going to have to abstain. Yeah, I'm taking fair. the coward's way out. <laughs> Well, I don't know. It's just like, it's the funny thing about like, this is a little side tangent here. This is the funny thing about like studying older Sonic history. It's much easier. But like when we get to like more modern, it's just all the different takes, all the different, you know, uh, citations. You just can't trust them. Anyway. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a lot of that. I mean, at least like before pre-internet days, it's just like I can fundamentally say something happened. (laughs) <laughs> you know opposed to like today it's like uh, i'd have to think of an example but it's just like i don't know how which history or like which revisionist history i'm following and which one is the accurate history like is this just some fan thing or is this like legit so but anyway yeah yeah i get that so in a cockroach slash some sort of pest enters your room where you don't want it what do you do with it honestly it depends on the mood like if i'm in one of my more zen-like mindsets, it's like, eh, do your thing. Maybe I'll usher you out the door. Perhaps you scurry back into a little hole somewhere, and I'll try to patch that later. Or if you're, you know, one of those gross water bugs, and it's three in the morning, and you scared the crap out of me, you're getting smashed. <laughs> Interesting. What would you say are the most treasured items in your Sonic collection? Uh, top of the list are the fan-made things. The in jokes, the custom Legos, the the models, the handmade plushes, stuff that took a considerable amount of time and love and were gifted out of respect and you know, also love. And it's it's extremely humbling and uplifting to know that you've inspired people to create these kinds of things and that they want to share it with you. Interesting. I'm gonna say interesting a lot because uh, I need I need some like <laughs> I need some like base word to like you know let people know that I'm actually intrigued. Maybe, maybe that's the word I should use. Intriguing. <laughs> neat. <laughs> no, that sounds condescending. Wow. No, no, that neat. Yeah. Wow. Cool story. No. <laughs> actually, in all in, in all seriousness, no. I, I do find the I do find all your answers captivating. I'm silently being captivated. Um. Wow. wow. Amazing. Yeah, there you go. I should just like have a soundboard. <laughs> Make this much easier. Credible. So, Ian, what is the greatest thing that the Sonic fandom focuses too much on? Shadow. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 there's Jim, some really good. There's I, some really good ones in the chat that I could say. <laughs> several people uh, typing. <laughs> that's intimidating i i feel like i do have a wealth of experience observationally with this but i feel like any judgment i cast here will be construed as being dismissive of personal desires or critique so again 
I'm going to Epstein. I'm taking the coward's way out. <laughs> I think these answers are perfectly fair because if I don't know, I mean, I'm not 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 I don't, I don't want to sound condescending at all. But this the thing is, is like if I were in your shoes, yeah, I'd probably do that, too. <laughs> I mean, Knowing based upon. Yeah, go on. I, I was just going to say, like, it, it just, I can't blame him either, honestly, like. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want myself out there saying, "Oh, here's something that the fandom spends way too much time <laughs> debating." It's like, well, no, probably don't want Ian saying that. I can say it all day; nobody yeah. cares. But <laughs> the fandom collectively is extremely passionate. Yes, for good and for ill. Yes, and in general, across multiple fixations, there is this desire for validation so to invalidate or to cast dispersions towards such validation incites a certain passionate reaction yeah which i really don't want to invite right now yeah it sort of becomes like a conspiracy theory right no, i mean like, yes you solved my three sixteenths argument <laughs> my my i i you 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 know you said like Three sixteenths bit of truth that fits into my argument. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I get that. Well, the, the conspiracy du jour is that you know I've explained why the power creep of hypersonic is something that needs to be avoided. But I also said I made a case for possibly doing hypersonic in frontiers, and that apparently is me changing my story and like being insincere or something. And it's like, no, I like hypersonic. It's cool. I yeah. also understand why it's a very loaded gun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's the thing about, like, I mean, being a content creator myself, the thing that's kind of really frustrating is sometimes, like, when you make something and then you put it out there, and then it seems like they always fo people focus on the things you'd never expect them to focus on. And you're like, what? Like, oh, the trees are the wrong color. The trees are the wrong color? Okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe this doesn't relate to what you're saying, but this uh, maybe. I don't know. No, it it it's all aspects of the whole principle of the death of the author. Right. Once you have true. released your creation into the wild, it will be interpreted by all who consume it, and they will bring their own variations to it. Some of them their own unique perspectives, and some of them, you know, very valid. Others completely wrong, but it's extremely difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff in that scenario. Hmm. Yep. So maybe maybe this next question is a little less loaded, or maybe it isn't. I don't know. Uh, the greatest thing the Sonic fandom focuses too little on is something you wish that, you know, they gave a little bit more attention. That's hard to say because the fandom is so attentive to so much. You know, everyone has their preferences, but it feels like it, you don't have to go far to find somebody who has zeroed in on one aspect and has explored it extensively and passionately and documented it across at least two wikis. I can't think of anything that they don't pay attention to. Mm, I can. Oh, well, all right. I'm thinking too much of the actual material, but yeah, what the fandom should fixate on a little bit more is who does what i was gonna say the people yes yeah like i'm very happy when people you know say they enjoyed a particular story or whatnot but i don't write all of sonic i haven't drawn anything sonic you know i'm very happy everyone enjoyed scrapnik island i had nothing to do with that and the credits are printed in every book Just pay a modicum of attention to the people who have poured their heart and souls into these creations, please. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I would say. It's like there's certain names that come up frequently and kind of either get praised or blamed for things that are beyond their control or that they weren't involved with. And that's like, come on, just just do a little bit of just look it up, <laughs> look it up. The information is there. So. I'm going to go to TV Tropes right now. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, where or what do you do when you need inspiration? Uh, varies. 
from project to project, day to day, mood to mood. Sometimes there's a particular music track to cue up to put me in the right mindset. Um, sometimes it's just the weather, you know, and this early spring or early autumn type weather is when my brain just seems to finally fire on all cylinders and I feel my most in tune with the muse when it gets, you know, all super cold in winter or I dread the summer heat, then it's not as great. But when it's, you know, just bright enough to see and there's that crispness in the air and there's the smell of either new growth or dead growth. <laughs> I don't know. Something about that just makes everything work in my brain. Hmm. So Ian, Mac or Windows? Windows. So the type of person who can write for Sonic the Hedgehog is... Someone with a malleable imagination. Someone who is familiar and appreciative of the source material, but can remain objective. And someone who is very patient. I am charitably two of those three. May I ask what those are? Not patient. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> I think you're more patient than you give yourself. You, you're way more patient than you give yourself credit for. But I know it takes you I like ever. I, it takes you like every fiber in your being to be that way. Sometimes I think. <laughs> I do appreciate that, and you know, as long as you can fool most people into thinking silence is patience instead of just all out restraint, <laughs> then yeah. those are like the sounds of the shackles we're hearing. <sighs> Oof. Okay. Oof. <laughs> all right yeah no no i get it um so when it comes to storytelling what piece of media do you feel has the best concept i feel that's incredibly broad can let, let's explore that a little bit okay in, in terms of storytelling what is the best concept do you mean in terms of world view world construction plot pacing character utilization what do you mean i mean sort of like for example like let's say you you watched you read a comic book or you saw a movie or and you just said to yourself wow that has a really great concept that just something that stuck out with you mm -hmm. uh one that always springs to mind was an issue of x factor i think way back in late 80s early 90s i can't remember now I didn't particularly follow the book. I think I got it as a random, like, stocking stuffer, Easter basket type goodie. But it was an exploration of the team through uh, various segments with a, a psychiatrist and how each of them explored their backstories, which were rendered in different art styles and different uh, conceits in such a way that it really made each one of them engaging in their own way. It's like, I have no idea who these characters are, but they all seem kind of neat in their own way. And that stood out to me for the longest time. Which one would you say has, uh, in terms of like a story, a piece of media, has the best execution? Uh, I think you could argue that Cowboy Bebop, I know that one comes up a lot, but it's for a reason. It's very episodic, but it tells its story and it weaves its theme throughout so that it can be fun and goofy, but its more tragic elements never really feel unearned. And going back and watching it with multiple gears in between, I'm able to appreciate different aspects of it over time. Stuff that I thought was incredibly bold and challenging at the time I'm like oh that's almost kind of pedestrian now i can see the, some of the weaker moments whereas stuff that i thought was maybe a little ponderous or um not as engaging at the time i just hadn't matured enough to understand what was being said also the television edit kind of butchered one of the storylines but you know, once you actually see what the entire thing is, it's like, oh, that, that makes me more sense when you actually keep a character intact. Hmm. That, that's another one for the soundboard. Yeah. 
Which one has the best world building? Uh, I mean, Bebop is, a, again, a great example of very subtly building this dystopian future. Um, it's been a long time since I've sat down and watched again, but I remember Deep Space Nine uh, introducing its new facets and uh, through its setting slowly but surely in very interesting ways. And on a completely different level, there's Skies of Arcadia, where the entire game is about exploring your world and making new discoveries and how they interact. And it's a much lighter, bubblier affair, but damn if it wasn't fun and engaging. I'm like nodding my head. You can't see me, but... (laughs) Yeah. Which which IP would you say has the best spirit? Hmm. That's an interesting one to think about. I don't think I've ever given that much any sort of consideration before. I think you could make a case for mainline Pokemon. It has this underlying current of the spirit of adventure and perseverance and adversity while also highlighting the dangers of fanaticism. You are you you're usually playing as a young child going out and discovering the world on your own terms and entering into a world of adults that have fixated on some ideal, some radical notion that endangers the community around them. And despite all odds, through the bonds that you have forged in your personal journey, you are able to overcome those obstacles and save everyone around you. That's an interesting take. Hmm. I've never thought of it that way before. So, Ian Flynn, what are what's one thing that people get wrong about you? My name, <laughs> Errol Flynn. It's I, what? It's it's Ian. It's I A N. It's not lowercase L A N. I am not a LAN adapter. It is not Ian. It is not Ian. It's not Ion. It, it it's Ian. <laughs> I take it you've gotten a lot of uh, personal phone calls where they've messed up your name. I. Uh, if I order food, it's I, I try to get the person's name right as they're ordering it. I maybe I'm wrong, but in, inevitably, invariably, for Lan, yes, thank you. Here's your tip. Have a good night. <laughs> I know it's not as common a name over here, but it's not like it's super foreign. Meanwhile, you take a boat back over to the homeland, and you go into any pub and say, "Hey," and then like half the room will turn to you and say, "Hi." <laughs> I, I I really don't understand. I feel like Ian is a fairly common name and a known name. I I, I don't yeah, I don't right? know. How do you mess that up? I mean, I don't know. People mess up my last name all the time. Not my first name, just my last name. I mean, I get called like so, Bradley all the time. So, so I mean, get that. <laughs> my real name is Radley, but everybody calls me Bradley because I guess that's the more popular name. That's the more common thing that at least contains your the same letters as your name but you know just one extra but yeah it's, it's kind of silly well here in japan everybody refers to me as well they don't refer to me i tell people my name is laundry because it's pretty close to radley like radori like landori yeah because because they will say yeah <laughs> yeah tell them how to how it's pronounced wrong so that way they'll pronounce it correctly <laughs> yeah right i get the, I, I yeah that makes sense so, Ian, um, one thing they get they get right about you is, hmm. You know, I've never paid attention to that. Interesting. Okay. What do what Last do people question. what do people Last... what do, hold on? What do people get right about Ian? I'm thinking. I'm thinking now. I mean, I'm just happy to be acknowledged. <laughs> like, hey, you're Ian Flynn. Thank you. Hi. Yes. <laughs> you're you're like the Sonic guy or thing or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That that works for me. He, I'm content with that. You're yeah. the guy who wore the costume and everything, right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Why not? Is the stunt, buy something or move on. Sonic stunt double in the movies, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, did the, you did the voice. You did like all the voices in Frontiers, right? <laughs> they modeled my teeth in the initial pass of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you you invented Sonic in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> Alright, last lightning round question. Eggman offers you a hug. Do you accept? Are we talking classic or modern? 
because classic would be funny just trying to see him reach around his own circumference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, so I'm guessing uh, no. modern? Oh, no, no, no. Not modern. Modern is very scary. Um, classic? He seems happier. He's just evil Teddy Roosevelt. More or less, yeah. <laughs> I imagine he'd be like a beanbag chair. <laughs> See, and I hear I'm thinking booms, boom egg man, because he's not like a bad guy. He's very manly in that one. He's a bad guy, but he's might not actually, a bad guy. Like boom egg man might actually give you a legitimate hug. I like think a true, yeah, bro hug. <laughs> yeah, boom egg man's not quite as evil as he wants to be, as he thinks he is. <laughs> All right, so now that we're like what thirty minutes in, are we in something um, like that? I think most of the people have probably left. I mean, if you if you haven't left, you should you should leave now. Because, <laughs> uh, you sh- you should you should go because you know you got other things to do. You gotta you got um what you gotta was it bills to pay? You got um I don't know student loans. You got taxes. Uh, you got music to listen to. Bills to feed, right, mouths that, to pay. Yeah, and uh, now that you know. Now that now that they're all gone, and now that all the cameras are off, all the you know they're still recording. Maybe Kyle is gonna go do some like you know he's gonna listen to I don't know some chip tune stuff or something. Yeah, right. some garbage. Everybody's, everybody's gonna leave. Some garbage. All right, Ian, what do you really think of the Greg Martin Mohawk Sonic design? Was never really fond of it. I understand the thinking behind it and the whole buzzsaw motif, but it looked flimsy. It looked like a piece of rubber stuck on them i much preferred the the spines the actual extension that made them look like a hedgehog okay yeah no i mean anybody who's still here no in all seriousness everybody who's still here for th- in you know 30 minutes in thanks for sticking around if if you've listened this long you should go subscribe to my youtube channel over at sonic historian <laughs> or no no my, my youtube name is radry r-e-d-r-e-y you know <laughs> we have uh, the former CEO. Hey, I'm doing my early plugs, you know, before the plugs. Yeah, yeah, get them in, get them, get them in early. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> stay tuned for an episode with uh, Tom Kalinsky. I also interviewed uh, Mike Lane Reasley, who was the executive, one of the executive producers on Sad Am. It was a really good interview. Uh, you should stay tuned for that. Cool. But uh, yeah, so Ian, I know your voice is very hoarse, and uh, I, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about. Now, this is like kind of the part of the interview or little segment that I know, like most of the time, I'm just a lot of people just ask you questions. But a lot of the times when I listen to these like guest sponsored interviews, I always sort of want to hear about the guests themselves. I mean, I know I'm, this is me tooting my own horn, but I sort of want to like I think it's important to give a little bit of a backstory because I think the last time we talked or last time we did the show, I kind of just I told you that I've been I've been a Sonic fan since like what 92 Mm -hmm. so i mean and i had it in like when i was growing up in colorado i the you know the the sonic 2 bundle and so that's why that was my first game and in the you know of course like it was like i think it was the christmas in 93 that i got the archie comic issue six i think the one with the the spinball cross or crossover what do you call that spinball adaptation adaptation. yeah adaptation Yeah. yeah that's one of my first issues too yeah really Yep, that was a yeah. So that was that was my issue. introduction to it. I mean, I love the the comic series. I was a big fan of it. I had the subscription. It was like pre-internet days when you actually had to send money in the mail, which I think you're. That's kind of illegal. I don't know. You're not supposed to do that, right? You're not especially <laughs> supposed to put actual money in an envelope to send to somebody. I think you can send a check. That's yeah, probably, checks okay. That might be what but happened. Who sends checks anymore? Does anybody use checks? Who uh, uses those anymore? I don't know. All of my clients. Yeah. Yeah. Most really? most okay. businesses, I think, is where it comes from. Yeah. Okay. I get paid direct. I mean, it's just, they send to my bank account. But anyway. Yeah, no. So I had one of those mail-in subscriptions, and I had one of, and I had one of those, and then I think it was around the time that, I was like, what was it, 97, 99, I think? When did 3D Blast come out? Is that 98? 96. 96. 96. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, I think that was my jumping off point. I was just, I kind of felt done with the series, and so I didn't even touch it from then on. I mean, yeah, sure, there was the Dreamcast that came out, but the Saturn was such a letdown, you know, because there was no real Sonic game. 
And, you know, I wasn't really sure where the Archie series was going and Sad Am wasn't on TV anymore. Because, I mean, I used to wake up really early to watch, you know, that Sonic the Hedgehog show, the serious one. Because I think the other one was like, you can only get that one on VHS, if I remember correctly, back in the day. Mm, no. So feel no. free to... No? It no. was on television? Yes, it was. That's how okay. I watched it. It was on, uh, like, a... It was in syndication, usually in, like, afternoon cartoon blocks on independent channels, at least where I was. That's not, like, it wasn't part of, like, ABC's lineup or anything for cartoons in the afternoon. It was just a, like, I think it played opposite or just before Disney afternoon. So they, it was, like, the independent smaller channels trying to compete with the big, big ones. So that's what I remember, at least. Okay, yeah, because I had the VHS back in the day. Yeah, but yeah, I mean there were tons of episodes on it on VHS, of course, but no, they syndicated it. Yeah, so of course that was a 3D blast was my jumping off point. No disrespect to any of the developers, I'm sure you're all great and you had the best intentions. It's just just didn't do it for me. I'm sorry, developers out there, if you're listening, I don't think <laughs> they are. But if they are, I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, so that was my jumping off point, and I just. I figured, you know, this is like something from my childhood. You know, I'm, I'm never going to come back to this. I traded in all my comics. I traded in most of the stuff that I owned. Or like I donated it or whatever. And I thought I'd never come back to this brand. Never. And it wasn't until like, because uh, I knew the Archie comic kept going and going and going. I, I can remember like, I remember seeing it on like the shelves, like when issue 99 came out. with Like the, the Mina and Sally on the front of it. And I remember looking at it and thinking, that thing still going? <laughs> I wonder what that's about. And so, I mean, I, I didn't bother to read it, but I'm like, I wonder what they're trying to, eh, whatever. So, I mean, the next thing that kind of reintroduced me back into the brand was, um, I want to say, no, no, no. I guess it was the Sonic Dreams Collection. Uh, if anybody who knows that, it's a fan-made game or games, which is a very, very bizarre and surrealistic depiction of Sonic the Hedgehog that... I'm like, oh, okay, this is what the fandoms become? Or, like, this is what Sonic fans are now? Okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, so, and I'm like, this this is what's been happening since I've been away from the brand. Okay, all right. And then there was the uh, the infamous, what was it, Game Scoop? I mean, like, I talked about this last time I was on the show. Yeah. But, like, the IGN people who claimed that Sonic was never good. And I actually think, well, maybe, is, is he? Was he never good? I don't know. You know, I mean, like, I've heard arguments against why the... The series is not good, or whatever that means. Um, and and so, like, they're introducing Mania, and of course, Mania was great. You know, Mania was like a return to the old 2D Sonic, right? Yeah. And so I was a big fan of that. And eventually the movie came out, and, you know, there's the, the design, like the, the horrible design, the, the internet reaction and everything. But the thing that got me was, when I was at work, I would always, I would come to work, and I'd, I'd have this friend of mine, and this guy, like, he's a friend of mine, He's like my coworker. He's not somebody you would point out in the street and say, that guy is a Sonic fan. You would not say this. He's this guy's like a, a bodybuilder. You know, he's uh, he's terrifying looking, kind of. A little bit. <laughs> right? And, and like, I don't know. We'd always like, we'd talk like, you know, during lunch breaks. And uh, one time I was just, I brought up Sonic the Hedgehog once. And he's like, wait, you're a Sonic fan? I'm like, me too, man. I'm like, Really? Sonic fans so, are everywhere, man. They're hiding in plain yeah, would, sight. You'd never know. Part yeah, of the crew, no, part of the ship, part of the crew, part of the ship. <laughs> there you go. And yeah. so, I don't know. At that time, I mean, I was. Uh, I mean, I guess backtrack a little bit here. Uh, this is like uh, what is it? Back in when I was in Colorado, when I was living in Colorado, I came to Japan in like 2009, and. I graduated, you know, and I, I, you know, I tried to figure out who I was as a person. I tried to figure out what am I interested in. I found out that like, it was writing, it was philosophy, it was filmmaking, that sort of thing. Um, of course, now what I'm doing now is I'm like, I'm a manager at a, a cram school. But uh, what would I, anyway, the point is, is that, you know, he, he really wanted my take on what it is I thought about the movie. Because, you know, like he was saying, oh, they keep referring to Sonic as an alien. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Like, for for days, I kept putting it off, and I kept putting it off. I'm like, I don't want to watch this movie. And I got other things to do, man. Like, I'm not going to do this. And so finally, I, I broke down, like, all right, I'll watch it. And, so, and I liked it. You know, it was good. You know, it was... Yeah. It's not, a, it's not you know, Citizen Kane, right? But 
I don't know if Citizen Kane is even Citizen Kane at this point. Well, here here's the funny thing about Citizen Kane. You know, yeah. like when I saw that movie when I was a kid, I yeah. hated that thing. I, I think hated most that. Kids, like, why I think, do I think most kids do? Yeah, yeah no, I I despise that movie. But this is like the strangest thing. It's like what? Two weeks, three weeks later, maybe a month. I'm like, man, that movie was great. I love that. That was excellent. <laughs> you know? I mean, here's the thing about that. It's like, I, I remember asking a bunch of people about this film. I'm like, what do people like about this movie? And then they're just sort of like, well, you know, it, it was really re- revolutionary at the time. A lot of people took their ideas from it. You know, it was it's a very nonlinear plot. And I, I think in a lot of the ways, you know, being in the, the Sonic fandom and, you know, appreciating what other people enjoy about, you know, being in this fandom is kind of appreciating what other people like, you know, because so, a lot of because I'm more of a I'm an older type of Sonic fan. I'm not one of the newer types where their introduction was, you know, Sonic Adventure or uh, Colors or maybe even Frontiers even. But so it really kind of helped me give like more of an appreciation towards it. Anyway, so. Going back on track of the story here. So I watched the Sonic film. And so I, st- and you know, during this time, this is like what, 2020 when I came out? 2021? It was 2020. This, yeah. Yeah. This is around the time when lockdown was happening and I had nothing to do. You know, it's just sort of like, well, I just stay at home. I could play some old video games. So I'm like, all right. So what video games have I not finished? The first one was, you know, Ghosts and Goblins because I've never, I was never able to finish it. It used to bother me so much that I could never finish that game. Like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to play every iteration of this game, I'm going to 100% it. <laughs> then you find out you have to beat it twice, right? Yeah, well, I knew that. <laughs> okay, Thanks you didn't know that. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, imagine how much fun that would have been. No, uh, uh, it, it's not. <laughs> yeah, right? No, no, I'm glad I knew that, because otherwise I probably would have given up. But, no, I beat every single iteration I could get my hands on. I haven't played the newer one, but... Um, and then I ran out of games to play. I'm like, well, why don't I check out the Sonic thing? See what's going on with that. Next thing, I started joining some, like, Discord groups and checking out with people, you know, revisiting the old Sad Am episodes. And I remember uh, being in one of these servers where I saw all this, you know, this the Sonic manga written in, like, one of the servers. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just some old Sonic manga that a bunch of people are trying to track down. And I'm like, I have to know more. I have to find this thing. Of course, you know, the best way to find it, you know, I guess if you want to find anything in Japan is you you go to the library. So I went to the uh, I mean, I I wrote into the show about this, about Mm -hmm. going to the National Diet Library like a couple of years ago. Like, see if I could like print all these out and like kind of compile them and like see like, you know, read the entire thing. And I guess much to my chagrin, uh, I, I posted like some of these on the Internet and the reaction was interesting. Because, you know, I, I think there was somebody who asked me, like, take a photo of it. And that's the one that got circulated all over the Internet. That became like a talking point. That one became like, you see, Amy's been around longer than Sally Acorn. <laughs> like, OK, I guess I'm a, I guess this photo is a talking point now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stepped in it without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah, no. And I mean, I thought like I thought, OK, now everybody's going to like take all these panels and they're going to dissect them to the, you know. The, the bare bones but no it was more like oh they're there okay well uh neat i can't read japanese i'm not gonna read the <laughs> right i mean maybe some people will take the time to like actually go through and translate some of them but you have to deal with really uh strange translations yeah but it's 30 year old anyway, it's so... 30 year old material that i think just yeah i don't know if it just resonates with people as much anymore um, I mean, I'll tell you this much. I mean, actually going through it and reading some of it, and I'm like trying to translate some of it, and I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. And, and I go, I ask one like some of my Japanese friends, I'm like, what does albayo mean? Because oh, it just means goodbye. They they say that in the '90s, but nobody uses that anymore. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. Uh. I guess like I guess it was really used pretty heavy in like Tenchi Muyo a long time ago, from what I understand. Huh. So therefore. Uh, this is a very, very long-winded way of getting to this question, Ian, um, which which kind of has me in a, a really strange sort of uh, predicament because I don't really know – I don't even know what to really think about these things in general. So here's my question. Ian, how much do you actually know about the Japanese side of Sonic? 
the exclusive older material, like the Koro Koro magazines and such? That's correct, yes. Not a ton. Um, and perhaps I just haven't looked in the right places, but it doesn't feel like it's been very well documented. Oh, no. For easy consumption, at least for Western audiences. So what I have seen is like piecemeal and what is presented hasn't ever been like super concrete. Like there would be these singular characters. There's a bear and a gorilla that shows up in like two pieces of promotional stuff, but I don't know if they actually show up in story anywhere. I don't know if they have any names or any thoughts to them. Bear and um, gorilla. Stuff like Mighty and Ray showing up in material well earlier than you would expect them to. There's some odd rendition of Knuckles as a chef where he's clearly not in character. It's like, was this a prototype idea that got restructured later? It's Oh, the dash and, and spin ones. Yeah. And it's, I have a passing knowledge of it, of, of Nikki and his transformation and Eggman being this more annoyance than central antagonist in the Veruca family, which only very recently was revealed as a whole freaking family. And hmm. I think it's fascinating. And there's a mad part of me that would love to tap into that long lost material, but I wouldn't say I'm as knowledgeable about that as I am over more of the American produced stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, it doesn't seem like these comics seem to be getting too much attention. It seems like the main focus, or at least what I'm seeing on, Twitter. I don't know if Twitter is real life. Maybe it's not real. I don't know. <laughs> it probably shouldn't real be life? real life. It's treated okay. more real than it probably should be, I think. I see more people talking about Archie and IDW. I don't really see them talking about, like, uh, yeah, the Shogakukan stuff, or oh, what's the other one? Kotokoto, or the Dengeki one, or uh, which one? Fleetway. Yeah, uh, do you, you, Twitter is very America, sort of North America centric, and so I think a lot of that is kind of why you don't get much talk about Fleetway or the Japanese stuff. I think there's also an aspect of it in terms of accessibility. Yes, that too. Like the Coral true, Coral yeah. stuff is considered old and defunct, and so it's more of a novelty something that's. You know, oh, it was there once, and isn't it nice that you know, we can look at it again? And back in the 90s, that would have been its weight in gold because there was so little material to go off of. This was back in the day when seeing Metal Sonic outside of CD or the OVA was astonishing. Sure, the Archie comics had it, but if there was any acknowledgement within the Japanese material, it was newsworthy. And now there's a much larger uh, unified global introduction to the material. So what is, you know, Japanese specific has lost some of its uh, mysticism, whereas material like the Archie run was canceled and cut off prematurely. So there is a sense of being denied this material there's the question of what could have been and it's no longer in circulation. So it's much harder to come by. So that I think brings to it a certain perceived value. It's just different perspectives of the media as it evolves over time. Oh, right, right, right. Um, I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if you have a copy of the, the cook and Becker as a cook and Becker. What's the name of that book? I have it. Um, yeah. The cook and Becker Sonic history book. What is that thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? The 1991 to 2016 book? I think so, but go on. Uh, anyway, because, uh, like, I think... No, no, no. Also, what is it? The uh, the Dreamcast, like, birthday box, like a special edition, features the Shogakukan manga. And I think that Cook and Becker one also features it as well. And I guess I should also say that um, I think it's really important to cite sources and cite the person who helped put that together. I follow a person named Linkabell on Twitter. I think he had a lot to do with that. I mean, I'd love to sit down and have an interview with him and be able to talk about what it actually is that he uploaded and put into the book or who put what into the book. But my point is, I guess Sega kind of acknowledges it. I don't really know. Any thoughts on that? 
uh, just that in general, Sega isn't as keen on old lore acknowledging or utilizing older interpretations of yeah. the franchise. And that that's across the board, whether it's Koro Koro or Adventures of or Sad AM or Underground or X, even Boom, Archie, either iteration, Fleetway. It's once that is once that tie in is done, it's kind of shelved and hmm. it's like the scene out of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's all being investigated by top men. <laughs> they might wow. they might have like a cursory mention of it in some sort of like overview or history book on Sonic, but other than that it's like they don't really want to acknowledge it. Yeah. Hmm. Which is because I'm a, a shame fun, personally. Well, I guess, I don't know. Personally, I'm a firm believer of a person who believes the idea that the past really does dictate the future. Like, you know, if you want to just, you know, have somebody appreciate something that's older, you should really like, you know, like like the stuff that you do, Ian, for like the IDW series. I think it's really great that you take some of these older concepts and kind of, reconst- you know, structure them back into the comic book. Like, I remember I was listening to a podcast. I think it was that one. Sonic Adventure podcast or Sonic Pocket Adventure with a guy named Sean. You were on the show, Ian. Uh, you were mentioning about how, like, what is it? There was, like, some glitch or something where you could make Sonic green, and that was, like, partially the inspiration for Surge. Or yeah. how you had the uh, the metallic versions that you could win at the end of, uh, what was it, Sonic Heroes? If you get A ranks with all the, what was it? I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that was real. It was, a, I remember it was multiplayer. I, multiplayer. I don't remember if how if there was any unlockable criteria, but it was a multiplayer thing. Okay. Hmm. Because I remember listening to that and like listening to this interview with you, that you were having on the other show. I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like that amount <laughs> that amount of like attention to detail. Like, like this is like I don't know. Okay, because turning Sonic green, that's like something you wake up like your dad at like five in the morning. Like, dad, 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 wake up! I turned Sonic green. You got to see it. You know, like yeah, whatever. Go to bed. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I, I know I'm, I know I'm sounding real reductive, a little dismissive, but I think it's great. So I, I mean, in terms of like this, you know, the Shogakukan, the Koro Koro stuff, I really think this is a gold mine. Like you're missing out here. Like this is like the stuff you could bring back. You know, the, the oh, whole I agree. evil, like the whole evil Amy arc and the Koro Koro series. That stuff's great. I don't know you should read it. I mean, Sonic gets attacked by a drill in the stomach. It's gruesome. If you haven't seen, I it. would dare say it's almost worth revisiting and revitalizing as its own franchise a different take on sonic yeah i think it would I mean, be okay, interesting okay. i guess this is like one of my other questions here it's sort of like what do you consider to be lost sonic media is it everything we're just talking about here like the whole japanese side of it oh sure mm-hmm. um anything that isn't currently acknowledged and up until like generations earliest you could argue the classic era was lost material because it just it wasn't acknowledged the switch to the modern era back with adventure in 99 that was a wholesale uh restructuring of what sonic was it wasn't meant to look back it's almost a soft reboot sonic adventure one is yeah and then generations was done more on a lark it was kind of a stunt for the anniversary and it was so well received that someone somewhere realized that there was a market for this and it grew. And then I think Mania and Mania Plus just kind of finally nailed that idea to the wall that people still want this aesthetic. They, they still want it to be part of Sonic. And it's like, okay, well, how do you reconcile that? And the answer is uh, lots of good faith and plot spackle. Where do they sell that spackle? I want some. <laughs> you're gonna need, you're gonna i don't need, think i've seen that one yet you're gonna need a lot you're gonna need yeah. like several 55 gallon drums full <laughs> okay <laughs> sega i hope you're listening sonic spackle spackle sonic spackle yes sonic spackle i can't speak spackle. is that it spackle 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 can't speak spack spackle spackle yes i hope you're listening make it happen <laughs> talk to the bondo people to help yes <laughs> So I guess with all this in mind, Ian, is there, I mean, are are there any things like with Sonic from the past that like really boggle your mind? Like, 
where you make you know make you say like late at night like i need to know more about that or i want to know more about that there's part of me that will forever wish we could take a glimpse into the other reality where sister sonic actually happened and how it would have influenced the franchise onward if you're not familiar no um, there was never heard of this before uh, are you familiar with pop full mail no what's that it was uh it's it's a quirky platformer light rpg for the sega cd specifically yeah yeah wow deep cut and it was japanese exclusive and when they were looking to bring it over the thinking at the time was to just wholesale revamp it as a sonic game starring sonic's sister instead of the regular female protagonist and there were enough fans in the west that were aware of this again sonic sega cd era that they got wind of this and were adamant about getting the original game not some weird thing wearing sonic's skin and so they actually localized and brought over the original pop full male instead of completing the sister sonic project so having seen pop full male in its entirety it's like what would it have been with a coat of paint sonic style who would have sister sonic have been would she have gotten a proper name you know what how would that have moved things in the future with being a foundational game you know that's fascinating i knew nothing about this thank you i have something to go look up after this yeah it's the it's a very uh i don't think it's come up much and there's like i don't think there's any material for sister sonic that it was ever actually released was there that you know of that i'm aware of yeah there were no screen no. like no screenshots or anything i think it was like a half column blurb in a gaming magazine yeah and that kind of extends to all the lost games that you know we have learned about or were teased enough that we knew that they might have been sonic extreme being the most obvious one but like had if sega sonic bros had actually <laughs> seen the light of day would we have those guys running around um context i'm assuming just what's that uh it was a puzzle game oh I, you're asking me if i know what sega sonic bros is, is that what you're yeah, asking? yeah you mean yeah. the old old one like the little ball and everything no, 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 no! Not, not the one with Mighty and Ray. The puzzle game. I don't think I know this one. It's just Red was... Sonic and Yellow Sonic. Oh, uh, that a, one. A, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, think yeah. I know that one. Yeah. yeah. In a weird puzzle game. Yeah. Like, would we have a Red and Yellow Sonic had that game continued, or did they transmute into Mighty and Ray at some point? It it boggles the mind. Oh boy. Oh man. I, I mean, all I could say it is just that like. Why am I doing the show? You're the Sonic historian. Like, you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess which leads me up to this other question. Like, do you feel like there's any gaps the fandom could, like, fill in? That, like, you feel like, well, I'm at, I'm at my limitation here. I can't do this. I need somebody else to do it. Go. Like, Sonic oh. historian channel, go. <laughs> oh, sure. Like, I have a passing knowledge of a lot of Sonic stuff, but there are numerous other communities and wikis and individuals who are more dedicated to specific aspects of it. I am just one part of a much larger community and most of my knowledge comes from their passion and their pursuits, their, their hacking, their uh, bidding on obscure, you know, warehouse clearance sales where they find these types of things. It's, I appreciate the praise, but my knowledge really comes from the efforts of so many others. Oh, sure. But I mean, it does feel really weird, like, you know, documenting stuff that like you feel like, well, this is my unofficial look at the Sonic franchise. You know, it's where it's like maybe tomorrow, maybe like Sega gets huge and like, nope, goodbye. You're gone. You're gone, Sonic historian. You 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 you, you took too many of our things. You're gone. <laughs> I mean, that's how it feels. You know what I mean? Yes. And they all sound like New Jersey gangsters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Why not? I, mean, I don't know. That's just how it feels. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, I think you're fine. It's it's just, it is hard to 
do the research on this and if you weren't there it's like okay well how do i go back and find this obscure thing from this long gone website from 25 20 years ago it's like okay <laughs> way back machine yeah until that doesn't become a thing anymore and the, they're in trouble right now they've yeah. been in trouble for decades have they i mean okay. it's it's, it's gone it's thing. gone it's gone in cycles of companies getting up in arms about it yeah I, I, it sucks too because i love the internet archive but i hate that intimidation tactic Ugh, whatever what intimidation tactic of trying to sue them oh, oh yeah that's what you're talking about. lawsuit okay. lawsuit int- intimidation tactic lawsuits right right i see, I see. yeah yeah that's what i mean yeah yeah okay okay so i mean these are my coming up on my last couple of questions here um so not lastly but more importantly this is kind of a question for me it's kind of a personal one um if you could live in japan ian or even kyle maybe you could speak japanese what do you wish you could do what what do you wish you could do in terms of in terms of the sonic franchise i mean i ask this of you not as somebody who works for the brand you know but somebody who's just a fan who wants to learn more uh i don't know what i would really do there in a way that i can't do abroad in general i do wish i had a better ability with foreign languages i have tried and you asked what failure was earlier it's me attempting to learn something beyond english and maybe attempt to spark a greater interest in it because sonic is not very big in japan it is oh no actually it definitely very... isn't very, they know, very the, they know him from the Olympics, that's for sure. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know him from like he's he's on some signs in arcades and places. Some he used to be at least. I don't know if he is anymore, but that's about it. I mean, the success of Frontiers is in Japan specifically is noteworthy. Yeah, because it was the first time in a while that Sonic got a lot of attention, and they marketed that like crazy. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. They put on the train. Uh, I mean, that stuff costs. I know how much that costs. That's not cheap. <laughs> and it, it's weird to me, though, because it feels like it has all the makings of something that should be an enduring hit over there. I, there are plenty of parallels with other, you know, shoujo manga stuff that is huge that Sonic is doing and has done in the past, and it just doesn't find traction. I don't know why. I think it's because Sega just never found traction in the console market, at least. So Sonic was mainly a console thing, and so yeah, because I think at that time was it Nintendo had like all of Japan in a choke. Nintendo hold. was a yeah. Nintendo had yeah Nintendo had a stranglehold on the market, and even mm-hmm. NEC was like number two, and then in a far distant third was Sega. I mean, I think that's the only reason. I mean, I mean, I I, I can tell you how here in Japan, like how they would make that a, a hit. It could always be like one of these things where like they introduce it on television and I mean, forgive me, but the way things work here is it's always the bandwagon effect. It's one of these things where it's like, well, I've always been playing Sonic since I was like, you know, six years old, you know, I'm like, no, you haven't. Like they did the same <laughs> thing with Star Wars. They, I mean, I think what, I remember when like Disney bought it out because, you know, People in Japan love Disney. They yes. really love it, you know. And like they even have Disney Mobile. I mean, if that paints you a picture, or I guess I don't know. Maybe they don't do that anymore. Or they don't do that anymore. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Um, the thing is, is that you know Disney was so huge. I mean, like it got people to watch Marvel movies, got people interested in the Star Wars movies. Despite you know, I talked to like randos on the street, you know, in, in Japanese, and they'd be like, "Star Wars? Oh yeah, it's not an American thing. What is that?" And yeah, but now it's like, oh yeah, Star Wars. I've always been watching that. So yeah, I think really in terms of like trying to make the the brand successful in Japan, you need to have one of these things where it's a television promotion and you have a bunch of quote unquote influencers on TV to, you know, say that they're big fans of it. Um, I think, what is it? I think uh, the Japanese side of Sega, they did some sort of thing with uh, a couple of influencers recently, Mm -hmm. but it hasn't really caught on yet. But I think it has to be the bandwagon effect in some degree. Yeah. That's my guess. Maybe. Maybe uh, maybe they'll hop on the bandwagon after Frontiers and they'll have played Sonic for the last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think whatever comes next, I, I don't know. Usually with the way things work here in Japan, or at least what I understand based on empiricism is, you know, things generally are like if you have enough momentum, you have enough content that's like saying it's because often they sell things here. But like it was big in the U.S., you know, it was big here. And then a lot of people are sort of like, oh, OK, I guess I'll give this a try. And then I still have people who tell me like, wait, Sonic's Japanese. This is from here. I'm like, yes, it's from here. There's a guy named Oshima Naoto. He, he created him. What? Really? I'm like, yes, really. <laughs> really. But yeah. But as somebody who uh, is more of like as an American, somebody who grew up with, you know, Sad Am and the Archie comics. And not really, I guess I knew that it was from Japan originally, but I mean, I don't know. You'd have a bunch of people who'd always say that, like, something was from Japan back in that day. Heck, I was even going to bring up that, like, there was a time when, like, you know, if, what is it? Japan, having something from Japan was not considered cool, right? It was like, uh, maybe, maybe you remember the day when, like, they used to, like, smash Japanese cars on television and they'd act like it was the most casual thing ever. Like, oh, I'm just smashing a Japanese car today because they stole all of our money. <laughs> like what you know but yeah, I, I think a lot of a that little, kind of... little bit a little bit of casual racism you know it's, it's not <laughs> yeah fine. a little more it's... casual but yeah <sighs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm i'm downplaying it as a joke oh yeah no no i know i know i know anyway yeah it's yeah yeah it was bad uh but i mean yeah i mean that may that probably explains why and i really do think that probably having to market the the character is more of an american character or something that's why they went the greg martin design i don't know i mean uh i imagine that's probably why it sold better at the time because now you can totally sell it as like oh this is more dragon ball influence or this is more anime influenced actually here's here's a question i have for you i, I forgot to ask this one ian is there a push to make sonic more anime not really no okay because like when i watched the knuckles uh like the little prequel or what's that thing called cartoon what, what do you call that cold open i don't prequel. know it's a, pre- it's a prequel. prequel prologue yeah prequel video i remember watching that thinking wow this is so anime-esque right i mean like i said is there i mean correct me if i'm wrong on any of this but that was all well, you was... and like tyson hess and and uh it was all american Americans, animation right? studio yeah i was impressed really i mean like this is so anime I'm like this is not like um, I remember watching thinking this, oh, this is so sad am or something, or this is so American, right? Well, well, it's, there's a much larger discussion to be had about what the distinction is between Western animation and what passes for anime yeah, and right. how broad and generic a term it is and how that's misleading, but the, it's, yeah, you know, the influence of anime that. on Western media is huge and i don't think people realize just how huge it is yeah like tyson and i are both children of the 80s and 90s we grew up on you know a lot of animation that was inspired by japanese studios and the big uh invasion of the 90s with you know dragon ball z and oh god uh oh yeah outlaw star and etc etc and the way that Japanese animation focuses how it delivers a sense of speed and momentum and impact, how it dedicates quiet moments leading into punctuated moments of action is a different philosophy than a lot of Disney inspired Western animation. Mm -hmm. And we're currently, I think at least entering into an age where everyone who grew up on both schools of thought, you know, grow up on Little Mermaid and Pokemon, you know, those completely different mentalities and disciplines are coming together to create a, I don't want to say a new, but at least somewhat hybrid style of animation that I think we're going to start seeing more and more of provided that, you know, more animation projects actually get greenlit and don't get cut off at the knees Right. No, I mean, I see a lot of anime that's like, I guess, I don't know if you can call it anime. That's like from the U.S. Like, I'm noticing the chat's talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. Is that like faux anime? Can you call it that? Is that, is that anime inspired? I don't know. Or inspired. Anime inspired? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right. 
I um, believe that was primarily animated by a Korean studio, but it was overseen by a Western production company. And it so, was created by where do you... Westerners. So, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, because that's the that's the biggest thing for me, because like I'm uh, like the Sonic movie when the Sonic movie came out here in Japan. I want to say it had a hard time connecting with Japanese audiences because I feel like because I, I think like the, the series in general, Americans generally have a lot different values than Japanese people do. I want to say because which makes me kind of feel like there's a little bit of like conflict here. For example, like uh, I'm going to use the example of Ace Attorney, right? Ace Attorney is if you play the game, it's more about like being a lawyer in the Japanese uh, judicial system. And the focus on the values are always more about social harmony, you know, whereas like in the U.S. it's more about like social justice or it's about individualism, whereas like in, you know, Japan's more about the collective. Right. Which makes me kind of wonder what the future is going to look like. So I don't know. It, I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm always interested in what you have to say about it. You know, somebody who contributes to making the brand as great as, as amazing it is right now. It's in an interesting transition period, I think, internally. Um, I don't think it's best that I wax philosophically further than that in part because i don't know oh, that's fair that's fair i mean i don't i don't want to step on toes and <laughs> yeah and two you know i'm i am one voice of many across multiple departments and multiple countries it's my take is one facet of a much larger chaos emerald <laughs> yeah no i mean i i do always appreciate what you put out into you know the world ian i really do i mean i want to say thank you for you know just giving us this opportunity to listen to the Bumblecast, to actually talk to somebody who contributes to making it, you know, because what was it, 30 years ago? We didn't have anything like this. Like, I couldn't pay. I mean, I guess you could go to a comic book convention, and, like visit the people who made the stuff back in the day. But some of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do really want to say thank you. And I really do mean that. I appreciate it. And thank you for sponsoring the show. Yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, I, I don't I think. It's just like, I don't know, having, reading all the nonsense that I read on Twitter every day, it's just sort of like, oh, boy. It's just like, I don't even know how to process some of it, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I feel bad for some of the creators. Like, are they seeing this? I hope they're not. Like, that is just, that's just you don't say that, you know? I don't know. Well, anyway, well. I digress. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. Just, well what, what do they say? Like, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. But anyway, I digress. Um, I guess this leads to another question. So I often get into arguments. Speaking of Twitter, I get into a lot of arguments with people who tell me how to enjoy the franchise for some reason. And that's fine. I can enjoy it a different way. That's fine. Um, and, and sometimes I often bring up the phrase, you know, everything is canon, right? Mm. And everybody always tells me, oh, no, no, that's a joke. That was a joke. You're not supposed to take that seriously. Like, okay, well, I, I think there is a little bit of sincerity to that. I really do think. Yeah. And I want to say that it's... Everything is canon inclusively. So, for example, if they wanted to use something that was from, like, the early 90s, from, like, I don't know, Sad M, like, the Do It To It line, they can. Do you agree with this statement? Do, am I correct? Is, it in, is everything inclusively canon? It can be. It's more of a mantra to say, don't be hung up on. This goes back to what I was saying earlier about a fervent v desire for validation right there's this expectation that there was a greater plan for this franchise from the start that there is some concrete coherence throughout that can be found and it there isn't because sonic has as a franchise has evolved with trends and what is popular has been at the whims of multiple cultural influences and has reinvented itself a few times and then said, no, we're all part of the same family. So everything in ca is canon is a mantra again to say, relax, enjoy what you enjoy about it and don't stress over some of the inconsistencies. And certainly you want a, base level of commitment <laughs> to quality. Mm -hmm. You don't want things to just be everything to be a hand wave, but at the right. same time, understand that this is a sp 
sprawling franchise that has been at the whims of all sorts of influences. Not everything is going to be airtight. Not everything will make sense. And what was disposed of in the past, like the classic era, might return to relevancy, like the classic era. And, you know, all these things are mutable. Great. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I think all right. I think we're about ready to start winding down here if you yeah, yeah, I know. Long-winded way of uh, having this conversation. No I want to finish up with one last one. <laughs> last one. Okay. Uh, now, I need I need to probably state, and I guess this is like where you, you plug all your stuff. Um, I am one of the members of the Rally for Sally movement, the, the movement that's like trying to get uh, Sally Acorn back into the IP, as it were. And I do get a lot of people who ask me, like, what can I do? I want to I wanna help out. I want to, you know, contribute. And, you know, I, I, I guess like, I'm not sure if you really have an answer for me, Ian, but I figured I'd ask anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I mostly tell them, like, I don't know, make fan art, uh, show, you know, tell Sega that you're, you know, you, you like this character, perhaps write to them. I don't know what that looks like, but I don't know. Do you have anything to add to this? Like, in terms of, like, if writing to them, I understand, like, being polite is one thing, but, like, sure. how should I tell them to, like, how do I tell people, like, you should write this, 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 and this? So it's sort of like, an automated process so it's not like where it's not like it's you know automated to the point where it gets annoying but automated to a point where it's like oh okay it sounds like people are really you know they like this character and it's not just some some weird fan thing or something i would say that like you said just earlier fan art is a good way to do it because that is a well not tangible but it's a easily identifiable marker of interest and to engage with the social media team via Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and whatnot, because the more you produce, the more metrics that they have to utilize. If they can point to a solid 500 tweets of, you know, rally for Sally showing some incarnation of her with Sonic, they can go to the higher ups and say, look, this is a, asset that we're sleeping on this is a product that people wish to consume why are we not doing this mm -hmm. um keep in mind that you know sally is contending with the main cast for yeah. attention i mean when was the last time we saw blaze in anything beyond the comics but the more keep, keep it up basically is show your passion show your devotion to it in a respectful and measured fashion and just keep it up so that when someone like me or one of the other folks at Sega who would like to see her, the freedom fighters in total return, we can pull from data itself and not just say, Oh, I heard on the internet that people want her back. That means nothing. But if you yeah. have like quantifiable amounts, you know, hashtags that have, a certain degree of following or trending that gives more credence to look, this is something that people want. Why are we not giving it to them? And then again, we also haven't had a chow garden since SA two. So it's not a foolproof plan, but it's at least something. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's, that's helpful. I mean, I could always go back to this inter interview and, you know, cite it in terms of like what it is I need to do. Because I'm always writing tweets for them. Oh yeah, so uh, anybody who's listening, go uh, go follow the Rally for Sally movement. If you like the character, awesome. You'd love us, you know, because uh, I try to make tweets every day where we go through the entire com uh, comics, the Archie comics, and older media, and we talk about it, and things that we loved, things that you know connected with all of us. So right now, it's mostly me. There's a couple of other people involved. Uh, there's Wolf Spain. There's Onyx. There's uh, Koji. Um, he's been in the hospital recently, but he uh, just got out of it, so he mm. kind of had a health condition. Yeah, but yeah, I heard about he's that. He's better. That's good. Uh, but yeah, go go follow us. We'd really appreciate the support because uh, yeah, this this character was you know pretty important to me back in the day. Uh, for uh, I guess personal reasons, but I'll get into that another time because I think Kyle, Ian, it's been a pleasure. I know that you probably have to get going. It's probably late where you are. 
I could keep going. Just a bit. <laughs> it's I late imagine for, you want to take a rest. It's late for Ian, but I, I'm good. <laughs> that and I imagine anyone who has stuck around this long is very tired of hearing this voice, <laughs> such as it is. The raspy no, Ian voice. No, it sounds so prophetic, you know? It's <laughs> like you're grasping out to every tiny word, you know? <laughs> it, it, it kind of, it kind you're of listening does. to the old wise man. <laughs> yes, yes, it's wise and it's gravitas. The great Uncle Ian, little solid snake ish, little black dude. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're like the third clone of Solid Snake or something that have seen it all. <laughs> well, in that case, oh, Rattery, before we go, why don't you plug everything you've got going on right now? Pretty good David Hader impression. <laughs> He's had a like lot that. of practice. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Kiefer Sutherland? It's the guy who does this. Anyway, oh, no, um, no. Yes. That only happened once. <laughs> okay. Nobody liked that? I still haven't played four. I haven't played Miles Gears 4 or five. It was only five. It was only five. Okay. Yeah, and, and there'll probably be never be another one, so it's fine. That's too bad. I like that series. Yeah. Even though the story makes absolutely no sense. But anyway. Anyway. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, people who are still here, still listening. I really should shout out the, the Discord chat. Everybody who's been writing comments. I haven't been paying attention to them because I'm trying to stay focused. You know, because I'm going to lose my train of thought. Thank you. Batman, 69 Lull, J Chance, Dominic the Raccoon, Wieldo, uh, Levi C. Uh, who am I forgetting? Captain Professor Scruffy Matt. Kyle. Hey, that's you. Hey, uh, I'm not in here. Fritz, you still here? Yeah. Yeah, he's still here. Dwy, hey, Dwy, thanks for joining us. Mighty Ray, Roller Rogo, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, please let me know. Maniacal Mo- Mobian, Agent Katz. Kaz, but Goomba sure. Broadcast. Close enough. Go- <laughs> Professor Rye's got to be in here. Yeah, he Sam, was here. He was hey, here Gab, Sam's here. Hey, Sam, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me and listening to my, my long-winded ramble. It was great. Um, am I forgetting anyone? Who else, who else is in here? I just, I just want to thank you all for listening and go subscribe to the Sonic Historian channel on my, my, uh, I should probably put the link in the chat here. Go and check Rad it out. Radri, what is it? I have to type it in. Yeah. Is it youtube.com slash Radri and I just typed in you.com. Hold on. <laughs> um, you.com. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Slash. No, that doesn't work. I need, I need a hyperlink. Darn it. You, Rad, right. you, Radri.com. Yeah, there, there we go. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Do that. Yay. There we go. Yeah, so subscribe to that one. Also follow us on the Rally for Sally movement. <laughs> and we'd appreciate. Help us get the character back in the franchise. And that is it. That is my spiel. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again to Radry for sponsoring this Bumblecast guest episode. If you want one of your own, head over to patreon.com slash Bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash Bumblecast, or become a YouTube member. Kyle, you got anything to wrap us up with? Uh, stay cool. It's summer almost, hey. so stay cool <laughs> for real. At least if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> see you guys later. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll see you next mission. Actually, real quick, real quick. Who taught you that? I love that, by the way. Be good to yourselves, be good to others. I just came up with it myself. It was... You came up with yourself, man. You you mad dog. You're a genius. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's okay. just You're a kind good of guy. The of the, right. At the if height of the pandemic, it was a lot of emotions running high. A lot of worry for everybody. And it's just, you know, look out for yourself. But also look out for those around you. We all we're all in this together. So be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Yep, I love it. It's cute. All right. Yeah. Why is it easier to use a solid snake voice? I don't understand. <laughs> this should've... is honestly not as hard on my throat. I should have done the entire interview as with this voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is David Hater these days? Hope he's doing good. Hope he's well. <laughs> he got picked up for some kind of major writing gig, I think. Oh, good. You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T. Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org.
and uh, we have Michaeline uh, Christine Ricci. No, Ricci. Oh my <laughs> God, she's gonna kill me for screwing up that name. <laughs> Ricci. Ricci of all names. Right, Risley. My goodness. Oh boy. Maybe she cut that out. <laughs> oh, dude. Anyway, <laughs> Michaeline Wright Reasley. Say she, that. Uh, say say it. Was... Say, hold on. Say it again. Say it again, so I can edit it, so it doesn't sound okay. terrible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or you can leave it in and just embarrass me. That's fine. Too. I'll put it in at the um, end. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> all right. It's okay. Hopefully, nobody listens at the end. Yeah, all, like, they don't. Else. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Ooh. All right. No. Uh, I also. Um, as I'll do what I'll do what Ian does. Do Three, take two, two, one. Yeah, take two. Three, two, one. 